Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Rueti Gadadhar Shri Vasudhi Gaur Bhatta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So uh, Let's take a little dip into the ocean of transcendental ecstatic love for Lord Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and this is Chaitanya Bhagavat by Vrindavandas Thakur Ancha Leela Chapter 2 Return to Bhuvaneshwar Jagannath Puri and other places Omaganati Mirandasya Kanagana Salakaya Chachun Militamyena Tasmai Shi Gurve Namaha. I was born in the darkest of ignorance. My spiritual masters opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. They offer my most humble, respectful obeisances and to the lotus feet of my spiritual master. Thank you, Srila Prabhupada, founder of Charya, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Hey, Krishna. So, return to Bhuvaneshwar, Jagannath Puri, and other places. Glory, glory to Lord Chaitanya. Glory to the Lord, who is everyone's life breath. Glory to the Lord, who brings fear to the wicked. Glory to the protector of the devotees. Glory to the master of Ananta Shesh, Lakshmi, Brahma, and Shiva. Glory to the Lord, who is an ocean of mercy, friend of the fallen, and the best of sannyasis. Glory, glory to Lord Chaitanya, who stays with his devotees. Oh Lord, be merciful to me. Please, stay always in my thoughts. <clears throat> in this way, Lord Chaitanya enjoyed many pastimes in Advaita's home in Shantipur. The Lord enjoyed many confidential conversations with the devotees. In their company, he happily passed the night. When the night ended and the sun rose, the Lord performed his morning duties. Then he sat down, his servants around him in the four directions. The Lord said, I will go to Jagannath Puri. Please do not be unhappy at this. I will see Lord Jagannath, the moon of Nilachala, and then I will return and stay with all of you. Please, happily return to your homes. Always be engaged in kirtan. Birth after birth, you are my very life. The devotee said, Lord, who has the power to thwart your desires? Still, this is a difficult time. No one can travel the roads in that country. The two countries are in the midst of a great quarrel. There's great danger from highwaymen. If it is the wish in your heart, please wait until there is not disturbance and everything is peaceful, the Lord said. How can a situation without obstacles ever come? I must go. Please tell the others my decision. <clears throat> Advaita understood that the, decis the decision in Lord Chaitanya's heart the Lord would go to Jagannath Puri and nothing would stop him. Folding his hands and waited to describe the true situation. What obstacle can block your path? All obstacles are your servants. Which one of them has the power to stop you? Lord, if you wish in your heart, you will certainly go to Jagannath Puri with great happiness. Hearing Advaita's words, Lord Chaitanya became happy. He happily replied with the word, Hari. 
walking like a ferocious lion, Lord Chaitanya then began his journey to Jagannath Puri. The devotees followed behind. No one had the power to stop weeping. After a short distance, Lord Chaitanya sweetly told the devotees, Please, do not be unhappy at heart. I will never leave you. Return to your homes, chant Lord Krishna's names. Some days, after some days, I will come back. After speaking these words, Lord Chaitanya embraced the Vaishnavas one by one, sprinkling the devotees with his tears. Lord Chaitanya wept. After reassuring everyone in many ways, the Lord proceeded south. Weeping and weeping with love, the devotees again and again fell to the ground and again and again picked themselves up. Like the gopis, when Lord Krishna went to Mathura, they were plunged in an ocean of grief. As the gopis somehow survived, so the devotees of Lord Chaitanya somehow survived in that time of separation. It was like the time when Krishna left for Mathura. Indeed, the Lord, the devotees, and the emotions were the same. Life and death depend on Lord Krishna's will. It matters not whether one drinks poison or nectar. No one has the power to change the fate of someone that Lord Krishna protects or of someone he kills. Lord Chaitanya joyfully went to Jagannath Puri. Nichinanda, Giradhar, Vakunda, Govinda, Jagadananda, and Brahmananda were his companions. On the road, the Lord tested them all. He asked, Are there any supplies or money? Who brought? Please tell. Who brought money and supplies for this journey on the road? Did anyone? Please tell the truth. They all replied, Lord, who has power to bring anything without your permission? Hearing this, the Lord was pleased. At the end, he explained the meaning of his words. The Lord said, I am very pleased that no one brought anything. <laughs> Destiny will provide the food written for that day. Even if one is in the forest, it is inevitable that he will meet his destined food. If the Supreme Lord does not write food for that day, then even a prince must fast. Without the Supreme Lord's permission, no one has the power to eat. Suddenly, for no reason, he will bitterly quarrel with someone. Angry, he will announce, I will not eat. Speaking that vow, he will rest his hands on his head. Or he may, all kinds of food for his body may suddenly burn with fever. Tortured by fever, what will he eat? In this way, the Supreme Lord's will is the cause of whether one eats or not. Lord Krishna places a great storehouse of food in the three worlds. If the Supreme Lord wills, one will always find food. In this way, the Supreme Lord personally taught everyone, they who have faith in his words will become happy. Why should one struggle 10 million times to attain something? One should not. Only if the Supreme Lord wills does anyone attain the result he desires. In this way, Lord Chaitanya again and again explained the nature of the Supreme Lord. As they arrived at Atisara Nagara, Lord Chaitanya gave these explanations. In the village of Atisara lived a very fortunate and saintly devotee named Sri Ananta. Lord Chaitanya stayed at his home. How can I describe his great good fortune? Very generous, Ananta Pandit became very joyful. He was not in external consciousness. The king of Vaikuntha had come as a guest in his home, happily prepared the Lord's meal. The Lord and his associates accepted the meal. In this way, the Lord taught that a sannyasi's duty was to accept meals offered by others. In Ananta Pandit's home, Lord Chaitanya happily passed the night describing the glories of Lord Krishna. Casting a merciful glance at Ananta Pandit and chanting Hari Hari, at dawn, Lord Chaitanya departed. Seeing Lord Chaitanya's cooling moonlight face, at every moment the people called out, Hari, Hari. Everyone saw the Supreme Personality of Godhead walking amongst them, the same Supreme Personality of Godhead 
who rarely places his feet in the hearts of the kings of the yogis. Walking on the Ganges bank, the Lord very happily came to Chhatrabhog. At Chhatrabhog, the Ganga divides into a hundred mouths. Delighting everyone, the Ganga flows in this way. At this place, Lord Shiva assumed a form of water. That's why everyone calls this place Ambulinga Gut. Please listen with one heart, and I will tell the story why Lord Shiva here assumed a form, Linga, of water, Ambu. In ancient times, King Bhagirat worshipped the Ganga and brought it to this place to deliver his ancestors. Overcome in separation from Goddess Ganga and always thinking of her, Lord Shiva came to that place. Seeing Goddess Ganga at Chhatrabhog, Lord Shiva was overwhelmed with love. The moment he saw her, Lord Shiva fell into the Ganga. Assuming a form of water, Shiva mixed with the waters of the Ganga. Gazing at Goddess Ganga, the mother of all the worlds, Lord Shiva worshipped her with great devotion. Lord Shiva knew the glories of worshipping Goddess Ganga, and Goddess Ganga knew the glories of worshipping Lord Shiva. Touching the Ganga's waters, Lord Shiva assumed a form of water. In this form, he humbly worshipped Goddess Ganga. Lord Shiva assumed a form of water at this place. That is why everyone calls it Ambulinga God. By the combined power of Goddess Ganga and Lord Shiva, Chhatrabhogram became famous as a very sacred place. Touched by Lord Chaitanya's feet in his pastimes, that place became even more glorious. Lord Chaitanya went to Chhatrabhog. At Ambulinga Ghat, he saw the Ganga divided into a hundred miles. And seeing this holy place, Lord Chaitanya was overcome with bliss, roaring, Hari, he made a great tamal. When Lord Chaitanya fainted in ecstasy, Lord Chaitanya caught him, and everyone called out, Jai, Hari, Hari. Overcome with bliss, Lord Chaitanya and his associates bathed at that ghat. As he bathed there, Lord Chaitanya enjoyed many pastimes. In the future, Veda Vyas will write about them in the Puranas. After bathing, the Lord climbed onto the river bank. He soon made the dry he soon made the dry clothing he put on wet with tears of love. With a stream of a hundred miles, the river Ganga flowed over the earth. Then also with a stream of hundred miles, tears flowed from Lord Chaitanya's eyes. Seeing this wonder, all the devotees laughed. In this way, Lord Chaitanya wept. The governor in that village was Ramachandra Khan. Although he enjoyed many sense pleasures, he was still saintly and fortunate. If this were not so, how could he have seen Lord Chaitanya? By divine arrangement, he came to that place. Seeing the Lord, that governor felt great awe in his heart. In a moment, he quickly came down from his palanquin. Falling to the ground, he offered Dandabad obeisances. Meanwhile, Lord Chaitanya, weeping tears of ecstatic love, was not in external consciousness. Oh, Jagannath, Lord Chaitanya thundered. Then he fell to the ground and wept. Seeing Lord Chaitanya's sorrow, Ramachandra Khan felt his heart break. In his heart thinking, is there no way to end his sorrow? He also wept. In the three worlds, no one has ever wept like this. Anyone who would not break into pieces when he saw this weeping, weeping must have a heart of stone or of dry wood. After becoming a little pacified, he who is the crushed jewel of Vaikuntha asked Ramachandra Khan, Who are you? Offering Dandan obeisances and folding his hands, the governor respectfully said, I'm a servant of your servant. Then other people explained, He's the governor of the southern province. Lord Chaitanya said, You are the governor? Very good. How may I quickly travel to Jagannath Puri? Then Lord Chaitanya shed a flood of tears again and then calling out, O oh, Jagannath, O oh, moon of Nalachala, he fell to the ground. Then Ramachandra Khan said, O oh, great saint, please listen. Whatever you order, that will be done without fail. Lord, this is a bad time. Between that country and this country, there is no path. The king has planted tridents in place after place. Every, tra every traveler is captured, declared a spy, and tortured. The only way I can arrange is to send you in secret. O oh Lord, please give me your attention and listen. I command the army here. Even so, this is dangerous for me. 
Still, why should I not help? Lord, whatever you ask, I'll do without fail. If you accept me as your servant, then, accompanied by your men today, please accept your meal at my place. What are noble birth, wealth, and even life? They do not mean anything to me. Tonight, I will bring you along that path. Hearing these words, the king of Vaikunta became happy. Smiling, he glanced a merciful glance at the governor. Simply by that glance, the governor became free of all material bonds. Lord Chaitanya stayed for a while at the governor Brahmin's home. Supreme auspiciousness came to that Brahmin's home. The fruits of all his past pious deeds at once came before his eyes. With great devotion in his heart, that Brahmin very carefully cooked for the Lord. Now Lord Chaitanya ate in name only. He would not spare even a single moment from ecstatic meditation on a person who was actually himself. To please his dear associates, Lord Chaitanya accepted meals. Spiritual ecstasy was the food he always ate. From the beginning of his journey to Lord Jagannath, Lord Chaitanya ate in name only. Anxious to see Lord Jagannath, Lord Chaitanya forgot his own self. In this way, he traveled on the road. Was it day, night? On what path did they travel? Was there water? Was there land? Was there a place to cross the river? Plunged in nectar of ecstatic love, Lord Chaitanya did not know. Always staying by his side, his dear associates protected him. <clears throat> Deva Vyas alone and no one else has the power to describe how Lord Chaitanya was wrapped in ecstatic love. Who has the power to understand <coughs> Lord Krishna's nature or when and how he enjoys his pastimes? Why was Lord Chaitanya so anxious? Why did he weep? Only Lord Yananda has the power to know the heart of this. Plunged in the nectar of devotion to a person who was actually his own self, in his pastimes, the king of Vaikuntha did not know who he was. Lord Chaitanya was Lord Jagannath himself. He himself was the person he longed to meet. Who has the power to understand the Supreme Lord if the Supreme Lord does not place his glance of person upon him? Accompanied by Nityananda and his other dear associates, Lord Chaitanya sat down to eat. After eating very little, the Lord roared and stood up. The Lord rinsed his mouth. He was wrapped in ecstatic love. How far is Lord Jagannath, he thundered. Then Mukunda began to sing. Then he was the king of Vaikuntha danced. The pious people who lived at Chhatrabhoga gazed at the playful lord of Vaikuntha as he danced. He manifested tears, trembling, roaring, perspiration, becoming stunned, his bodily hair standing erect. How many ecstatic symptoms did the Lord manifest? Who knows the heart of the Lord's ecstasy? A wonderful flood of tears of love flowed from his eyes, a flood like the swollen Ganga in the month of Padra. The Lord danced around and around. Tears gushed from his eyes, tears that bathed everyone there. I say that Lord Chaitanya became ecstatic love personified and descended to the earth. No one but Lord Chaitanya has the power to act in this way. In this way, the third three-hour portion, Prahara of the night passed. Then Lord Chaitanya became peaceful. Every person thought in his heart, the night passed like a single moment. By Lord Chaitanya's mercy, everyone was delivered. Then Ramachandra Khan said, Lord, the boat has come to the ghat. It is ready now. Saying Hari, Lord Chaitanya once stood up, walked, and entered the boat. Casting a glance of mercy on them, he bid farewell and then proceeded to his own city of Jagannath Puri. By the Lord's order, Kunda sang kirtan as the Lord traveled in the boat. The foolish boatman said, I am afraid. I think today we will not remain alive. On the riverbank are tigers. In the water are crocodiles. There are many thieves who will take our wealth and kill us. Oh, Master, please be quiet until we reach Arissa. When the boatman spoke this way, everyone stopped singing. Lord, Kinchin, Lord Chaitanya continued, continued to float in many tears of ecstatic love. In a moment, Lord Chaitanya stood up and shouted, Why are you afraid? Why? The Sudhasan Chakra stands in the front of this boat. It always protects Vaishnavas from any danger. Don't worry. Sing the kirtan of Lord Krishna's names. Do you not see the Sudhasan Chakra? Hearing the Lord's words, all the devotees again sang the kirtan. Lord Chaitanya used the situation to teach everyone. 
The Sudasan Chakra always protects the devotees. Any sinner who would attack a Vaishnav, the fire of the Sudasan Chakra throws into flames and kills. Lord Vishnu's Sudasan Chakra always protects the devotees. Who has the power to attack the Lord's devotees? Lord Chaitanya spoke confidential teachings in this way. A person who has attained the Lord's mercy can understand these words, he said. Plunged in the nectar of Sankirtan in this way, Lord Chaitanya finally reached Arissa. The boat finally landed at a place called Sri Prayag Ghat. Then Lord Chaitanya stepped from the boat to the shore. In this way, Lord Chaitanya entered the country of Arissa. Anyone who hears this story will float in the nectar of ecstatic love for the Lord. In this way, Lord Chaitanya happily entered the country of Arissa. Accompanied by his associates, he bowed down to offer respects. In a place there called Gangagat, Lord Chaitanya bathed. After bathing, Lord Chaitanya bowed down before a Shiva deity established there by Maharaj Yudhisthira. Now that he and his companions had entered Arissa, Lord Chaitanya was very happy. Leaving everyone at a temple, Lord Chaitanya went out to beg alms. Whenever the Lord went to a house, the people would gaze at him and become enchanted. The Lord would spread his cloth, and the people would at once place some rice upon it. Everyone happily offered to Lord Chaitanya whatever food was in their home. Goddess Lakshmi, who is known as she who fills the world with food, begs to stay at the Supreme Lord's feet. Assuming the form of a sannyasi, that same Supreme Lord personally went from home to home on the pretext of begging arms, he made fortune at all the souls in that place. After begging in this way, the Lord felt happy at heart. Returning to the devotees, he sat down among them. Seeing the food he had begged, everyone smiled and said, Master, you certainly have the power to feed us. Jag and Ananda happily cooked, and the Lord and his companions ate. All night, Lord Chaitanya sang kirtan in that village. But when dawn came, he left. After traveling a short distance, the Lord met an ill-behaved toll collector. Demanding a toll be paid, he would not let the Lord pass. Gazing at the Lord's spiritual effulgence, the man became filled with wonder. How many people are with you, he asked. The Lord replied, I do not have any companion in the whole world. I do not belong to anyone, and I tell you the truth. I am alone. No one is with me. When the Lord had spoken these words, a flood of tears flowed without stop from his eyes. Then the tax collector said, O saintly one, you may pass with great happiness, but all these others must pay the toll before they pass. Chanting Govinda, the Lord left everyone behind, walked a short distance, and then sat down. <laughs> when the Lord abandoned them, the devotees became first dejected and then happy. Seeing that the Lord's indifference to them was only a game, they all smiled. When the Lord left them, at first everyone was unhappy at heart. Then Nichananda enlightened them, Don't worry, the Lord will not abandon us. Then the tax collector said, You are not with the sannyasis, therefore, the sannyasi, therefore you pay the toll. Leaving his companions, the Lord went a short distance, sat down, bowed his head, and wept. Hearing that weeping, the stones, dry sticks, and other things began to melt. Seeing this wonder in his heart, the tax collector began to think. The tax collector said, He's not a human being. How can such a flood of tears fall from a human being's eyes? Bowing down, the tax collector asked all of them, Who are you? Whose people are you? Tell me the truth. Everyone said, He is our master. Perhaps you have heard his name. Sri Krishna Chaitanya! <laughs> we are all his servants. When these words were spoken, tears flowed from the devotee's eyes. Seeing this, the tax collector was overwhelmed and tears flowed from his eyes. Running, the tax collector offered Dandavad obeisances to the Lord's feet and humbly said, I must have performed pious deeds in millions and millions of births so today I may see you. Now my life has become perfect. O ocean of mercy, please forgive my offenses. Now you may quickly go to Dragonath Puri. Casting a merciful glance at the tax collector and chanting Hari, the master of all living entities continued on his journey. Lord Chaitanya will deliver everyone, all except the sinners who blaspheme Vaishnavas. 
Even the devel demons melt when they hear Lord Chaitanya's names and virtues. Only the vilest of sinners will not honor him. Casting his glance on all the people, the king of Vaikuntha went on his way to Jagannath Puri. Overcome with ecstatic love for a person who was actually himself, Lord Chaitanya did not know on what path he walked. Drinking the nectar of ecstatic love, day and night, he was agitated. In this way, Lord Chaitanya traveled. After some days, he came to the river Suvarnareka. Suvarnareka. The Lord and the Vaishnavas bathed in the supreme clear waters of Suvar, Suvarnareka. After bathing in and sanctifying the Suvarnareka, Lord Chaitanya, who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead disguised as a human being, continued on his journey. Nichinanda and Jagadananda fell behind. After going a short distance, Lord Chaitanya sat down to wait for Lord Nityananda. Lord Nityananda was always wild with ecstatic love for Lord Chaitanya. He was always agitated. One moment he would shout, the next moment he would weep, then he would wildly laugh, then he would roar. One moment he would dive into the river and swim about, the next moment he would cover his limbs with dust. The next moment, tasting the nectar of ecstatic love, he would violently fall to the ground. Everyone thought his limbs must have become broken into pieces. When he danced alone, the ground trembled. There was nothing surprising in any of these descriptions, for Nichinanda was a Nantashesha, descended to the earth. By Lord Nichinanda's mercy, everything's possible. Lord Chaitanya always stays in his heart. While Lord Nichinanda waited in one place, Jagannanda went to beg alms. Jagannanda carried Lord Chaitanya's danda. Giving the danda to Nichinanda, he said, please give your heart to protecting the Lord's danga. Danda, I will beg alms in return after a few moments. Without thinking, Lord Nityananda accepted the danda. And agitated at heart, he sat down. Holding the danda in his hand, Nityananda laughed. Then he playfully said to the danda, He whom I carry in my heart carries you. That is not right. Speaking these words, ferocious Nityananda Balaram broke the danda in three pieces and then threw those pieces away. Only the Supreme Lord knows what the Supreme Lord desires. Why did Nityananda break the danda? How can I know? Lord Nityananda knows what is in Lord Chaitanya's heart, and Lord Chaitanya knows what is in Lord Nityananda's heart. Yuga after Yuga, they are brothers. They were Ram and Lakshman. In every moment, they know what is in each other's heart. In truth, they're one person. But to teach the truth of devotional service, they've become two. It's only because of Lord Nityananda that I know this truth of Lord Chaitanya. Who but Lord Balaram himself has the power to break Lord Chaitanya's danda? Actually, this was a trick. Lord Chaitanya himself arranges to teach the people. Anyone who knows the heart of this pastime easily crosses beyond this material world. After breaking the danda, Lord Nityananda sat down. In a moment, Jagadananda returned. Seeing the broken danda, Jagadananda was surprised. In his heart, he became worried. He asked, who broke the danda? Lord Nityananda replied, He who carried the danda broke it. The Lord broke his own danda. What else has the power to break it? Hearing these words, Jagannananda said nothing more. Picking up the broken danda, he quickly left. Going to where Lord Chaitanya was sitting, he threw the broken danda before the Lord. The Lord asked, How was the danda broken? Please tell. Did you fight with someone on the road? Jagannananda Pandit told everything. While Nityananda broke the danda, he said, Lord Chaitanya asked Nityananda, Why did you break the danda? Please tell me. I have seen it and I've heard about it. Lord Yananda replied, I broke a bamboo stick. If you will not forgive me, then punish me. Lord Chaitanya said, The danda is the abode of all the demigods. Why do you think it's only a bamboo stick? Who has the power to understand Lord Chaitanya's pastimes? In his heart, Lord Chaitanya thinks one thing, but from, a mouth, from his mouth another thing comes out. Please, therefore, please know that anyone who says, I know Lord Krishna's heart, is a fool. When he sees a person he wishes to kill, the Lord may be very pleased and affectionate. But when he sees a person more dear than life to him, the Lord may act as if he does not care. Only a person who has attained the Lord's mercy can understand these inconceivable pastimes. 
Although by his own wish he himself had broken the dunda, now Lord Chaitanya was angry, the Lord said. The dunda was my only companion, but now, my Lord Krishna's will, it's broken. Now I have no companion. You all go ahead. I will follow. Who had the power to protest the Lord's order? Hearing it, everyone became worried. Then Mukunda said, You go ahead. When we finish our duties, we will follow. Good, said Lord Chaitanya and left. The Lord walked like a wild lion. It's very difficult to describe in the words of a book how he walked. In less than an hour, the Lord came to Jalashwar Gram. He promptly went to the temple of Lord Jalashwar, Shiva. With scents, flowers, incense, lamps, flower garlands, and many ornaments, the Brahmins worshipped Lord Jalashwar. A tumult of many kinds of music arose, and the four directions were very auspicious singing and dancing. Seeing this, the Lord became pleased. He forgot his anger. Hearing the music, he tasted the nectar of ecstatic love. Seeing the glory of his dear devotee Shiva, Lord Chaitanya happily danced. Lord Chaitanya knew Lord Shiva's greatness. Lord Shiva is dear to all the devotees. I have no respect for a person who claims to follow Lord Chaitanya's path, but is not respectful to Lord Shiva. I will not call such a person by the name Vaishnav. Such a person is completely useless. Everything he does is in vain. Then Lord Chaitanya, the life of all the worlds, danced. He roared so loudly he seemed to break the mountains. Seeing this, Lord Shiva's servants were filled with wonder, they all said. This person must be Lord Shiva himself. Everyone sang and played music with even greater joy. Lord Chaitanya happily danced. Not even a half sesame seed's worth of his thoughts were placed in the external world. Arriving after some moments, Mukunda and the other devotees began to sing. Hearing his dear associates, seeing his dear associates, Lord Chaitanya's bliss increased. He danced as they gathered around him and sang. Who has the power to describe Lord Chaitanya's ecstasy? A hundred nectar stream of tears flowed from his eyes. The temple of Lord Shiva became glorious, for the king of Vaikuntha danced within it. After some moments of ecstasy, Lord Chaitanya left with his dear associates. With great love, he embraced them all. They were all joyful at heart. Seeing Lord Yananda, Lord Chaitanya embraced him. Then he happily said, You are supposed to restrain me and help protect my sannyas, but all you want to do is turn me into a madman. If you continue like this, you will eat my head. Whatever you do, I will follow. What I say is the truth. Then Lord Chaitanya taught everyone, Everyone should honor Lord Yananda. Lord Yananda is greater than me. I tell you all this truth. It is the truth. Anyone who offends Lord Yananda but does not offend me can, st can still attain ecstatic love and devotion. Any devotee who has even a half sesame's worth of hatred for Lord Yananda is not dear to me. Hearing these words of praise, embarrassed Lord Yananda would not lift his bowed head. All the devotees were filled with bliss. In this way, Lord Chaitanya enjoyed pastimes. After passing the night at Jalashwagram, the Lord and his devotees left at dawn. On the path to Vamsadaha, the Lord met and spoke with a shakta, sannyasi. In his heart, aware that this person was a shakta, the Lord nevertheless cheerfully spoke sweet words to him. The Lord said, Please hear, tell where you all are. After a long time, I will now see all my friends. Charmed by the Lord's Maya potency, the Shakta began to tell all about himself. One by one, he described the Shaktas who stayed at his place. Listening, the Lord smiled. The Shakta said, Come now to my monastery. We will drink bliss. By the word bliss, the sinner Shakta meant wine. Aware of this, Lord Chaitanya and Nichinanda only smiled. Lord Chaitanya said, Today I will come and drink bliss. You run ahead and quickly get everything ready. Hearing this, the Shakta happily left. The Supreme Lord's pastimes are profound without limit. Lord Krishna is the purifier of the fallen. This all the Vedas say, that's why Lord Chaitanya spoke with that Shakta. The people said, this Shakta is now delivered. By his touch, the other Shaktas will also be delivered. In different ways, Lord Chaitanya delivers all the conditioned souls. After speaking sweet words to the Shakta, 
Lord Chaitanya, who is he, who is Lord Hari himself, went to Ramunagram. At Ramunagram, seeing his own deity form of Lord Gopinath, Lord Chaitanya danced again and again with the devotees. Lord Chaitanya forgot who he was. Overcome with love for a person who was actually himself, he wept piteously. Hearing his piteous weeping, even the stones and dry sticks melted. Hearing his weeping, even the hypocrites who proudly wrapped themselves in the flag of religion melted. After some days, Lord Chaitanya came to Yajapur, a town of Brahmins. Anyone who sees the wonderful deity of Adi Varaha there destroys all the bonds that tie him to the material world. In that holy place flows the Vaitarani River. Simply by seeing it, one becomes free of all sins. Even an animal crossing that river, the demigods see as a four-armed resident of Vaikuntha. Within Yajapur is the, pa is the place called Nabigaya, where there's a temple of goddess Viraja. Eight miles away is Jagannath Puri. In Yajapur are many temples. Even in thousands of years, I could not name them all. There's no place like that city. There are no temples like the temples there. In Yajapur Gram, every building is a temple. First accompanied by his devotees, Lord Chaitanya, the jewel of sannyasis, bathed at Daswamedagat. Then the Lord went to the Adivaraha temple where singing and dancing, he tasted the nectar of ecstatic love. Seeing Yajapur, the Lord became very happy. Again and again, he became ecstatic. Who can understand the desires the Lord holds in his heart? Leaving everyone behind, the Lord went out alone. Not seeing the Lord, everyone became worried. They went from temple to temple, looking and looking, searching but not finding the Lord anywhere, they became worried. Then Lord Yananda said, Everyone, please be peaceful at heart. I know why the Lord left. He went alone to see all the temples and holy places in Yajagram, Yajapura Gram. Let us all go, collect arms, return here, and stay here. Tomorrow the Lord will come to this place. In this way, the devotees collected arms and ate. Meanwhile, the wandering Lord saw all the holy places in Yajapur. The devotees stayed where they were, and the next day the Lord met them there. Suddenly jumping up, the devotees happily shouted, Hari, Hari. In this way, the Lord made Yajapur holy and fortunate, then chanting Hari, Lord Chaitanya continued his journey. Traveling in this way, for some days, Lord Chaitanya came to Kataka Nagara. After first bathing in the sacred Mahanadi River, the Lord went to the temple of Shakshi Gopal. Gazing at Shakshi Gopal's enchanting handsomeness, Lord Chaitanya roared with bliss. Calling out, Master, Lord Chaitanya bowed down and offered prayers. He wept wonderful tears of love and bliss. The Supreme Personality of God, whose mantra makes his deity forms come alive, now bore the name Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Even though he is the Supreme Personality of God himself, he enjoyed pastimes of serving the Lord. He descended to the earth and enjoyed pastimes like that. Then Lord Chaitanya went to Bhuvaneshwar, which Lord Shiva made into a secret duplicate of Varanasi, bringing drop by drop the water from every holy river and lake Lord Shiva created the lake Bindu Sarovara. Aware that this lake was very dear to Lord Shiva, Lord Chaitanya bathed in it and made it even more fortunate and glorious. Then Lord Chaitanya went and saw the deity that Lord Shiva had manifested of himself. In the four directions, the devotees were chanting the names of Lord Shiva. Row on row of ghee lamps burned in the four directions, and Abhishek was always in process. Seeing the glory and opulence of his dear devotee Shiva, Lord Chaitanya became happy. The Vaishnavas with him were also happy. The Supreme Personality of God had tasted the nectar of remembering whose feet Lord Shiva does not even know whether or not he is covered by garments, now danced in Lord Shiva's presence. Singing and dancing before Lord Shiva, Lord Chaitanya became very happy. In that village, Lord Chaitanya passed the night. Now I will tell the Skanda Purana's description of how Lord Shiva first came to this place. In ancient times, Shiva and Parvati secretly lived for a long time in Varanasi. 
Then Shiva and Parvati went to Mount Kalas. After that, human kings enjoyed staying in Varnasi. One of these kings who bore the name Kasiraj worshipped Lord Shiva and enjoyed life in Varnasi. Then by destiny, the noose of time came around him to attain the power to defeat Lord Krishna. That king performed severe austerities and worshipped Lord Shiva. By the power of those austerities, Lord Shiva appeared before him. Ask for a boon, Lord Shiva said. The king asked, Master, at your feet I ask for only one boon, a boon which I will have the power to defeat Krishna in battle. Lord Shiva is the master of the fools and materialists. His nobility and virtue are fathomless. Who can understand this mercy? He said, King, you march into battle. I will follow with all my armies. I will follow with my Pashupata weapon, who will have the power to defeat you. His heart fooled by Lord Shiva's words, the king happily marched into battle with Lord Krishna. In his heart, intent on fighting for the king, Lord Shiva followed with his armies. Meanwhile, Lord Krishna, who is the super soul present in all hearts, knew all that was happening. Aware of everything, Lord Krishna threw his Sudarshan chakra and cut all the enemy to pieces. No one could escape the Sudarshan chakra. First approaching Kasiraj, Krishna cut, Sudarshan cut off his head. At the end, <clears throat> Sudarshan burned all of Varanasi to ashes. Seeing Varanasi burned, angry Lord Shiva threw his fish and Pashupata weapon. What could the Pashupata weapon do before the Sudarshan chakra? Seeing Sudarshan's power, the Pashupata weapon fled. At the end, even Lord Shiva fled in fear of Sudarshan. The Sudarshan chakra's power is felt in all the worlds. Fleeing, Lord Shiva found no escape. As in the past, Durvasa suffered from Sudarshan, so Lord Shiva also suffered. At the end, Lord Shiva understood, I will not escape Sudarshan without first taking shelter of Lord Krishna. Thinking in this way, he trembled in fear. And Lord Shiva, who is actually the first of Vaishnavas, took shelter of Lord Krishna. He prayed, O Supreme Master, O Son of Devaki, glory, glory to you. O all-providing Lord, O shelter of all swords, glory to you. O person who gives both wisdom and folly, glory, glory to you. O creator, protector, and destroyer of all, glory, glory to you. O Lord, who does not see the faults of others. O ocean of mercy, glory, glory to you. O only friend of the suffering soul, glory, glory to you. O Lord, whose shelter breaks all offenses, glory, glory to you. O Lord, please forgive my offense. I take shelter of you. Hearing Lord Shiva's prayers, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Master of all souls, stopped Sudarshan Chakra's attack. The Gopas and Gopis suddenly made the four directions glorious and beautiful. His face, both smiling and angry, Lord Krishna said, Shiva, you know my glories. Why, why did you think as you did? Siding with that degraded king, that worm, Kasiraj, you fought with me. Now you see you cannot defend yourself from the attack of my Sudarshan Chakra. The Ramastra, Pashupata Ashra, and all other great weapons cannot fight with my Sudarshan Chakra. I do not see anyone in the material world who hates me more than you. Hearing Lord Krishna's angry words, Shiva trembled in his heart. Finally, grasping Lord Krishna's graceful feet, Shiva surrendered himself, he said. O Master, all the worlds are subject to your command. Who has the power to be independent of you? As a blade of grass move in the wind. All the worlds move by your will. They're not independent. What will all souls obey? You cannot cross be who cannot cross beyond your Maya. Lord, you gave great false ego to me. That's why I do not see the existence of someone else greater than me. Your Maya threw me into this calamity. Master, what can I do? My heart and mind are not independent. Your lotus feet are my very life. Meditating on your feet, I will stay in the forest. Still, it is you who gave this false ego to me, Lord. What can I do? It's your will. Oh, Lord, still I have committed an offense. Please forgive me and give me your mercy. I pray I will never be foolish in this way again. Lord, please be merciful and give me this boon. Full of pride and ego, I committed an offense. I was punished. I will not commit that offense again. Lord, please give me your order. Where shall I stay? Where can I go if you do not give me permission? Hearing Lord Shiva's words, Lord Shiva gently smiled. The merciful Lord said, Listen, O Shiva, I'll give you a splendid spiritual abode. Please go there with all your associates. O Master, who appears as millions of lingas, you may stay at the beautiful place named Akam 
Rakhavan. That city is beautiful like Farnarsi. It is my own private, hidden, transcendental city. O oh, Shiva, today I declare that place is your home. That place is my heart still. No one knows the truth about it. On the shores of the ocean, at the root of a banyan tree, is beautiful Purushottam Kshetra, which is also known as Nilachala. When the numberless universes are destroyed, that place is not destroyed. That place is my eternal home. Every day I eat opulent meals there. That place is 80 miles in size. The demigods see that all living entities, even insects, worms, and beasts, have the four armed forms of liberated souls in Vaikuntha. Therefore, I say that that place is very sacred and auspicious. Anyone who sleeps in that place obtains the result of meditating in samadhi. Anyone who reclines in that place obtains the result of offering obeisances. This is the, ve this the Vedas declare. Anyone who walks in that place obtains the result of circumambulating a holy place. Anyone who talks in that place obtains the result of offering prayers to me. The place is very pure and glorious. Even if one eats fish in that place, he obtains the result of eating havishva. That place is very dear to me. Therefore, it is known by my own name. Anyone who lives there becomes like me. Yamaraj has no power to judge in that place. For everyone there, I personally decide what is pious and what is a sin. I give you a place north of my city there. That beautiful place will grant both material pleasures and liberation. Famous with your name, it will be called Bhuvaneshwar. Hearing the glories of this wonderful city, Lord Shiva again grasped Lord Krishna's feet and said, O my master, O my life, please hear my appeal. At every moment, I am always very proud. If I leave you and go to some other place, it will not be good for me. I wish always to stay near you. This my heart wishes. As long as I associate with wicked people, I will never attain anything good. Please give me a place within your own abode so that I may associate with your servants. Now that from your own graceful mouth I have heard its glories, I yearn to stay in this place. Lord, I am very fallen and lowly. Please allow me to serve you. Please give me a place in your abode, even a place the size of a single sesame seed. My heart yearns to stay in your abode. Speaking these words, Lord Shiva began to weep. Hearing Lord Shiva's words, Lord Krishna's fate, whose face is as graceful as the moon, became pleased. He embraced Lord Shiva, and then he said, Listen, O Shiva, your body is like mine. Whoever is dear to you is also very dear to me. As you are, so am I. We are not different. To you I give homes in all of my abodes. You are the protector of my abodes. I give you the right to live in all my abodes. I give you a kamrav to you. Please stay there in your original form. That place is very dear to me. I stay there always. Anyone who claims to be my devotee but does not honor you is only cheating. He mocks me. In this way, Lord Shiva came to live at that place. Even today, that place is known by the name of Bhuvaneshwar. To prove that Lord Krishna dearly loves Lord Shiva, Lord Chaitanya danced before Lord Shiva. In this way, Lord, Sh Lord Chaitanya personally demonstrated how to follow what Lord Krishna has taught in the Puranas. Chanting Shiva, Ram, Govinda, clapping his hands, Lord Chaitanya danced again and again. In this way, accompanied by his devotees, Lord Chaitanya went to Bhuvaneshwar and worshipped Lord Shiva. One who does not honor this teaching of Lord Chaitanya, who is the Shiksha Guru of everyone, commits a great mistake. For that he will suffer. Accompanied by his devotees, Lord Chaitanya happily wandering in that city, looking and looking at many Shiva Lingas. I have to stop here. I have an obligation to meet, to be continued. <laughs> Hare Krishna.